is Python's de facto standard GUI or graphical user interface package. And it is a thin object oriented layer on top of the TCL or the TK. Now TK is not the only GUI programming toolkit for Python, but it is the most widely used and the most commonly used GUI uh, toolkit for Python. And it is also very easy to use and there are a lot so there is a lot of uh, support and uh, help that you can get while using it if you run into an error because of the documentation and of course there is a you know, large number of people who actually use it. Then we have uh, the overview of what we will be covering today. So we will be building uh, an IDE for now to run Python programs and that will allow you to customize it. So you can be, you can customize it as you want. You can save documents, save as document. You can, you'll have the option to save as a new document. You can run the code. You can change the layout or the colors over there and much, much more. So, and you can also add on to these features and add or remove whatever you feel is required or necessary for your requirement. And yeah, that's basically it. So let's get started. Let's get coding. Okay, let's start coding our uh, custom IDE. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a sample tkinter GUI so that we can see actually what's going on and type in the code there. So that's exactly what we'll do. So we'll say from tkinter import everything. And then, then next what we can do is we'll create a window. So we'll name it window window equals and then we'll say tk. And finally, we can run it. So we can say window uh, dot main loop, and we can save the code and open up our command prompt and run it. So yeah, there it is. This is our. This is the start of our process. So we have built a GUI which looks very empty right now. Notice one thing that it says TK as a label. So we'll change that in a bit, but let's move on so okay so when we want to change the label we can say window dot title and we can change that so previously it was just saying tk we can call it uh, custom ide let's just call it my custom ide save it and uh, it should have the title over there now what we need next is we need to have some kind of a place to type in the code so for that what we will do is we will create we will create over here something called uh, let's just call it text editor so we'll create text editor equals text and it will be a text uh, widget from the tkinter and uh, uh, yes next thing we need to do is to pack so text editor dot pack make sure it's there in our gui and we can now try running the code again and see what happens okay so here we have our gui notice how the silver color changed to white color and now i'm able to type it in i can type whatever but nothing's happening yet but but it's still a progress and obviously the name has also the title has also changed to my custom id so we're moving in the right direction with just very few lines of code okay now next what we want to do is we want to create some type of a button that we can click and run the program so for that we what we will do is we'll create a menu bar to hold the button like just like it's over here so uh, there is the run button we will try to create something of this sort in over here so let's try that try doing that so for creating the menu and the button we need to first create a menu which is over here we can type in what should we call it let's call it uh, uh, menu menu bar okay menu bar and then we can equal it to uh, menu so we can say menu bar equals menu and then we can pass in our window so over here we have our window yes this will create a menu bar now what we need to do next is we also need to create another bar which which will hold actually which will actually hold the button so what we can call it is uh, let's call it the run 
bar equals again menu and then this time around we will pass in the menu bar which we had already created and yep one last thing is that we can say menu uh, sorry run bar run bar dot add we can add, add some configuration so we'll say add uh, sorry not configuration add wait uh, add command it is yes not uh, add command and then we will give it a label so that we know the what's the button actually used for or what's it called so we'll call it label equals run right okay one last thing is we will add all this to the now we'll add the run bar to the menu bar so we'll say menu bar dot add cascade now this is how it will appear on the on the GUI and then we'll just name it run as well so let's run it and see what happens okay yeah okay before we run it I forgot that we need to place another thing over here which is menu we we'll need we we'll actually need to pass it where uh, the name of the thing so we'll just call it the run bar right so the menu is the run bar and yep the menu bar is now connected to attach to the run bar so let's just save our code and try running it okay right okay uh, okay it's not there uh, because I made a very silly mistake I actually didn't add it to the window so let me just uh, do that window dot config and then add in the menu so menu equals uh, equals the menu in the name of the menu that we created which is the menu bar in our case okay let's hope I did not do anything wrong and run it again okay yes now it's there and we can see that we have a run button and when we click on it we get this run button over here now we do get this annoying dotted line as well which does something weird but let's try to remove this we can easily remove it so the way we remove it is we can simply go over here where we declared our run bar and we can say tear off and then equal to zero tear off equals zero save the code try running it again and we shouldn't have that again okay now we have everything looking perfect so yes let's move on to the next stage which is actually running the code and that's something that is more important so to actually run the code that's written in our text editor on our GUI we will create a function and we'll call it uh, run my code for example or no not run my code and run my code and in this function what we basically are trying to do is to actually first get the text text that is written and then based on uh, and then run or execute the text or whatever is written in the text so first we need to get the text and how we do it is text editor dot get it's really simple and we need to define from what location we need to start getting the text and we'll get it from one which is the starting position and the second one is the ending position so we need to we'll get it till the end so the entire thing we will get the entire text and just to see if this works we will first try printing it so we'll just print the text okay let me okay let me just create a variable store this in a variable called code yep and this should work and I spelled king wrong okay and now this should work but one last thing we need to do is we need to connect it to our run button so we need to say command equals to uh, run my code so that it actually knows that when this button is pressed I need to run this code this part of the code or this method so let's save our code and try to run it okay so let's see what happens okay so we have our editor over here and we can say for i in range 10 
print i right let me just copy and keep this for next time and try running it so on the command prompt you can see that it's actually printed the entire text as is so yeah this is something that's not be required we require it to actually run the code so that is very simple now you won't believe me so i just told you that you simply need to change this print command to exec and it would automatically run the code next time let's try so let's run the same command again and open up the our ide and let's just paste it oh wait uh, let me just or never mind i think my okay for i in uh, range uh, let's print 10 numbers and we can say print i okay and let's run it all right so over here as you can see on our command prompt it actually printed the uh, zero, 10 numbers from 0 to 9 rather than printing this statement as it was doing previously so yeah that's how we can run our commands okay so let's move on now what other functionality we need to implement is we need to have some kind of mechanism to open other files save our code and these type of functionalities so we'll try to implement them now okay so let's just copy the these three lines and paste them here and change the name of course so we'll make it file bar and reflect the name changes the name over here and yes okay so what basically this command does is it creates a button like this but oh sorry this command the ask the add cascade it creates something like this but when we have to define what the inner buttons are specified as this is the command that comes into play which says the add command so over here this you can think of as this line over here and the functions or the buttons that are actually over here are these so our first one will be options or oh no, sorry not options or rather open and this will be our file menu so inside our file menu we will have the child I, the children uh, items as open save so we might have to copy this file or this line several times and paste it okay we have the open we have the save let's have another one for save as then we have uh, finally we have the exit now we need to change the code or the this part which says run my code so every time the button any button is clicked it will for now it will just run the code but later on when we actually type in the code for these uh, functionalities we will change them so let's run and see if everything's working okay okay so we have the run and the file though the order is wrong but we yeah we have it so let's correct the order this should be very simple uh, now the reason order is wrong is because we have the run bar on top and the file menu at the bottom so let's just ch change it to the other way around and save our code and try running it again and see if this helps okay so now we have it in the proper order and now let's head on to adding the functionalities for these buttons to start with adding the functionalities to these options let's start with the exit one which is the pretty simplest one so if you type in just exit that's it it works so when you click on the exit it will close everything and yeah next let's do the functionality for our open button so our open okay not this open so what should happen if you click on open so basically you should be prompted with a dialog box to select a file and then open it up right so for for the dialog box we need to import something from tkinter which is from tkinter dot file dialog we need to import something called ask 
open file name and we will also import something else which we'll use in the other one is ask opal file names right so then we can come back to our open function over here and what we can do is we can say that our path is equal to ask open file name and then to filter the file types we can say file types so file types equal and we can pass in say so we only want the python we are only interested in the python files so we'll just say python files and this should be within quotes python files and the extension should be uh, anything that has dot pi at the end so asterisk and dot pi so this is for this will open the dialog and we'll be able to select our pi files dot pi files sorry once we have selected our files what we'll do is we'll open these files so we'll say with open okay let me not name it open and uh, let me name it open my file because just to be sure it does not mess up with our function that we have with open so uh, what it requires is the path and since we are only going to be reading the file uh, we are reading from the file so we'll type in r and we'll name it uh, say open as uh, yep okay this this yes so now what we want to do is we want to read the content of the file and then if we have anything written on our uh, ide we want to clear that and then paste the content of the file that we are opening into the text editor over there so that's what we'll do so we'll say text editor dot or before we even do that we first actually need to read the file so for that we will say uh, again we'll call it code code equals to uh, file dot read so this will get all the uh, all the information or the data that is written into the file then we can say text editor dot delete and what we want to delete is so basically everything starting from 1.0 till the end so that basically means anything that is there in the text editor delete it and once we have deleted everything we also want to insert or add in the code that we have read from the file so for that we have a function which is called insert and we'll say text editor dot insert again where we want to insert we want to insert from the starting to the end so we'll just copy it from there and paste it here and uh, yeah we don't want end or in this case we want the code to be pasted so we want to start from uh, line number one and add the code yes and uh, that's pretty much it let's see if this actually works so let's head on to our command prompt and run this again okay wait i just realized it won't work because we have not connected it to our buttons over here so over here we need to change it to open my file right and uh, yes now it looks like it should work so i've saved the code run it again and this time around when i click open it should open up yes so yeah we can open up the code Okay, but let's not open it now and uh, let me type something so that we can actually see if the code that is in here is getting erased. So let's go to file, open and open up a new file. So we'll just open it this one. So yeah, there you go. We re the, the, the random text that I typed in is been, has been removed and our code that we are working on is actually over here and there's the exit button that's it it worked fine as well okay so let's move on to implementing our save so we'll say we create a function called save my file as so this is basically for the save as and then we will see what we need to do for the save but for the save uh, as what we need to do is so the basic idea is whenever the user clicks on save as it gets a file dialog 
pop-up which asks uh, the user to type in the name of the file and then saves it uh, to the location. So what we first need to do is we need to get the path and that is by asking the user for the path. Okay, wait, I just realized that I opened, imported the wrong thing earlier. So what I need to import is ask save as file name and ask open file name. So just sorry, excuse me for that. And this should be ask save as file name. And yeah, and then again it asks it needs parameters, and these parameters will be the same because we are again saving it as .py file. So and this is also very much similar. So we'll copy this code. Now what we want to do is we want to first read all the uh, all the code that is there inside the text editor of our IDE and then write it to the file. So that's what we'll be doing. And one thing is uh, instead of R, we are typing W here because this time around we are writing to the file rather than reading from it. And the code will be not file.read but text editor.get and get from 1.0 to the end. So it's 1.0 comma end. And then we don't want to delete it and we don't want to insert it. So yeah, we can just remove this these two lines of code. And we can say file dot write. And now we can actually write the code that we copied into the file so yeah I think this sh this should work and one last thing is when we go to the save as we need to change this to save my file as otherwise we'll run, in, run into some weird errors and won't even know what's wrong so let's run our code and see if, if anything is wrong or not working so and let me just type in anything and see if it gets saved so file save as Yes, there we go. It's asking us for uh, writing the name, so let's just name it uh, test asd dot pi and save it. And now, if we want to open it, we can try opening the file. We can say search for test asd. Yes, and open it. And there you go. That is our file. Okay. If you don't believe me, let me just clean it and open it up again because the exact same thing was written already there so yeah it did actually open up the file and the file actually got saved so yeah this method was a success now we will look into how we can implement the save method for saving the file what we can do is uh, we can use the same method as the save as file but for that we need to first get the path of the file that we are working on so let's say if you're working on a certain file we need if we have the path we can save or add to that file or overwrite the file with the new additions that have been made so what i'll do is i'll create a global variable to store the path so let's create a global variable called uh, okay First, uh, let's just call it gpath for standing for global path. And once we have the global path, what we want to do is uh, go into the save file method. Okay, let's just create it and initialize it. So gpath is equal to initially empty. Then inside our uh, save file method, what we do is we check uh, that if our file path is uh, we need to check that if the gpath is empty then we will ask the user to save uh, save the file or save as however if the gpath is not empty then it will uh, save in the same location so for that we will write a simple if statement it says if gpath uh, equal equal null or empty then what we do is we ask for or basically we can just copy this line I can indent it and delete this so okay let me not just do that and delete this entire line okay so if the gpath is empty we do this else what we do is go back here and else we can say 
that uh, the our path is equal to g path okay so this way we should be able to get the path and uh, yeah, we we have to do the same thing uh, or similar thing for the ask uh, open my file as well so what happens is when the user opens the file we have to store the path of the uh, file so that we can later use it to save the file when the user clicks on the save button so for that we'll simply come here and we will say gpath equals to path so we need to copy this and put it for the save as well so here about that so let me just uh, change this g path so let me just do this so i can say global g path right and g path equals path and uh, do that over here as well global g path okay not gr path but g path okay uh, hopefully this should work try again for another time and see what happens so let's open a file and uh, test okay no, this one probably this one and add in some more three lines of garbage and save it yeah so it is saved since we didn't get the uh, pop-up for save as now just to see if this has been saved now this has one two three and six lines of text now if i go ahead and remove all this and open the file again they should bring back the file with six lines yes so there it is so now we have the open working save working save as working and of course exit works as well so let's just clean this and head on to our last part now the last part is that what we want to uh, like what's happening now is we are getting the we are seeing the text editor and we are getting the output on the command prompt or the terminal in case you're using linux but we don't want to do that we want to have the output or the errors and everything inside the same ide gui so let's implement that to do that first we need to create another text editor so we need to create another text area where we can see the output so let's quickly do that and uh, okay where we yeah under here we can say okay that uh, let's just name it output also the output oh my god what's happening to my spelling sorry output equals again let's create text and give it a height of seven now this is something that you can play around with or choose and give it a height of seven this will make it bigger or smaller depending on the height that you give so i feel that seven is a good number but you can again try and what whatever works with you you can choose that number and then yep yeah, uh, let me quickly show you how this looks okay uh, before we can actually see it we need to say okay not here we need to say uh, window sorry not window output dot pack output dot pack and this will add it to our gui let's run it again and yeah there you see so this is our first one and this is the second one where we will see our errors so yeah and if you change the height this it it will change the this line so if you increase the height this will take it further up if you decrease it further down so if you go below seven it will take this bar down so yeah you can i feel that seven is fine but again you can change it if you prefer something else and uh, yeah once we're done with this to actually see the errors on the uh, on the panel or the on the second text bar uh, text output that we created before we need to change our run method or the run my code method so this is this was a very easy way of doing the or running the code but for in order to do things more efficiently we'll do it another way 
So for that we will create a variable called cmd equals so basically or not cmd let's just call it uh, command equals to and we'll create our f string and in that we will run it as python and the name of the file so we'll call it we'll give it the gpath right because that is what we have stored it so again we'll come here and we'll have to say that gpath is a global variable so global gpath and then this will what this will do is it will run the uh, code or execute the code as as you would in from command prompt or somewhere else and again we need to create a process for this and before we actually create a process we need to import sub process library so we can uh, say import sub process and over here we can say sub process is equal to uh, sub process dot p open so sub process dot p open p open is like uh, it will open the uh, python thingy in a new uh, as a new process so that they can easily communicate with each other and then we will pass in our command and for the std out we will say sub process sub process dot pipe and again the same thing for std error we will say sub process dot pipe okay pipe and finally we will say that shell equals to true okay so so far so good finally what we need to say is that output and the error which is okay i I think I've named the uh, this is as uh, this as output. So let me call this output uh, result and error. These will be equal to whatever the process communicates to them. So if the from uh, the output of the program will be reflected here. So if it's an error, it will go into the error. If it's uh, if it's an output, it will go into the output result. So what we need to do here is we need to simply say process process dot communicate and this will do the trick for us. Finally, to actually be able to see these uh, changes on our uh, on our IDE, we need to connect it. So for that, we will say output dot insert dot insert and we will go for, for from the top down so we'll say for at the very beginning insert the output and uh, if we have an error insert that from the beginning as well so let us copy that and instead of the out okay not output i keep mistaking it okay this should be output result and this one should be error right so this is how we do it let's just add one more thing to this uh, the option that uh, you can only run the program after your file has been saved successfully so to implement that we will say if uh, gpath okay wait gpath is declared here so we can call it here if gpath is equal equal to empty then you will so if there is no gpath and the user is trying to run the code uh, what we will do is we will ask or prompt the user to save the code first and then run the code so because if you don't then it it results in some errors so to avoid all those we will just ask the user to save the code first so we can say save uh, save message equals uh, okay top level then we have okay uh, then we have text the message that we are actually displaying so message equals and it will be a label which has uh, the save message oh no okay 
the save message and the text that we are going to put in there will be uh, save save uh, the file first save the file first or let's just be more courteous and say please save the file first right and uh, then we can say that uh, uh, message dot back and return okay so this seems fine okay this error has been here because i typed it in wrong okay so save message is top level and then we add a label we pack it and then we finally return so now if everything goes well this should be working perfectly without any errors so let's see okay moment of truth let's uh, type something and try to run it without saving it so uh, let's just print 12 and run it okay so we get a pop-up small cute little tiny pop-up over here which says that we need to save the code first so yeah we can listen to the pop-up and save the code and yeah also the all the other things still work we can open the code we can run the code and uh, let's just add something more sensible into this and try running the code again since we have changed the way the code runs so we need to see if it actually works so you can say print 12 plus 23 and maybe just remove the spaces and try to run it okay let's try let's save it first save and now run it okay and yes as you can see the output is there so if i run it diff several times the output will just start coming from there let's see what happens if i put and if i make an error so let me save this file save and run it over again okay so i get the error as well so there is our error as well so yeah that's how you can create your id now a few things that we can tweak over here is i leave the rest to you but a few things now you can play around with these settings and change as much as you want you can add uh, uh, different colors or something but one thing however that is that is every programmer's wish is the dark theme that is something we are going to do it do now so that is very simple so what we will do is we will go to where we have declared our output and text editor so right here over here where it says uh, text editor we will say uh, okay where we are where is our cursor okay here we will say text editor dot config and we will make some tweaks to the configuration so we will say that background uh, is equal to and then you can pass in a hexadecimal value in in my case i seem to like this one 362f uh, 2e and so the background color will just change how the background looks but the the text that you'll be typing will still be black because of the default color so you need to change that as well and to do that you have to change the foreground color which will be fg equals again you can pass in uh, the hexadecimal of the code of the color and so i have chosen for a darker background with white uh, a white shade of a light shade white shade of the uh, text color and one more thing is that when you have a dark background and a light foreground your text uh, the cursor is by default black so it won't be visible so you need to account for that as well so you need to say insert background equals and okay this time around we won't be giving in the uh, hexadecimal we'll just type in white but you can uh, give in the hexadecimal i think as well so let's save this and let's see if this actually did, made a difference okay so it did make a difference so let's try typing in yes this looks better right it's much more easier to look at 
Okay, now the problem is with this one. So we'll give this we'll give this one a nice matrix look. Okay. So what we will do is we'll copy the same thing. Okay. Instead, we don't really need the cursor to be visible in this, so we will remove this part. And for the background, we'll keep it same. But for the foreground, we will give it a nice green color so that it looks like those sci-fi movies or cyber movies which show people coding. So we'll give it that green color so that whenever we get an error or output, it feels like, oh, we have done something. <laughs> so, yeah. And you can change, you can play around with the colors. This is something that I'm just doing it because I like doing it. So, okay, wait, why did it not change? I think I did not save the code or what did I do? Oh, okay. I think uh, it's because I have not changed the name. Okay. Silly mistakes. Yes. And let's try running it again. And uh, yes, there it is. Okay, now let's open up a code and sh see what the error colors or the message color looks like. So it, this is, this should now give an error. So let's run it. And yeah, the, the error is a nice green colored error. So yeah, that's how your output will look as well. So your, the text the, or the code that you type in will be white, but the output or the error will be the green. Now you can play around and change the color of this and add more functionality. So that really depends on what you want to do, but this is how easy it is to create your own IDE. And the good thing about it is it's very customizable. So now that you have coded it, you know how things work and where I can improve it or what more functions I can add. And it's not very resource uh, heavy as well. So yeah your cpus will be thanking you all for this so yeah so that's it for today's workshop well that's it for today's session i really hope you guys enjoyed it if you did smash the like button and share it with your friends and if you want to be notified of any new videos that we upload consider subscribing to our channel and yeah this is amar signing off see you next time Bye bye